So, hello, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Take Drugs With Me. No. Um, today, we, we're probably once again going to go through something Reddit related. It's, well, no. Maybe not. Maybe we're not going to do so. Let me see. Let me see whether I can find a good new book summary. Something amazingly great to, to go through and to talk about. Um, from Nat Elias. Relatively good books. Or, you know, relatively good. It's quite amazing book summaries most often. And um, it's not so... Like, th there are some sites. You know, they, they maybe have a lot of book summaries. But the quality is and also the, the the usefulness of the books they're covering is like mm, maybe maybe not that relevant bro but let's see dog training let's go through something about it no not gonna do so but aphorisms aphorisms being um actually quite always nice to go through when you're not yeah it's basically like social media a lot of different thoughts and a lot of great ways for me to, to be inspired and then talk about something. The Art of Worldly Wisdom by Balthasar Gracian, or whatever, Gracian. Uh, pretty interesting book, pretty amazing book. Aphorisms and Thoughts by Napoleon. Worldly Wisdom, Quotations and Aphorisms by Josh Kaufman. An assorted collection of quotations and aphorisms on various subjects. Unrated since I... Well, it is rated eight, uh, 6 out of 10, so it is rated. Um, it didn't really introduce anything, just curate them. Good for a skim through to find interesting ideas and thinkers. So let's go through that. Because I believe I may have not gone through this yet. On money, but I kind of think I did. Worldly wisdom. I think I actually did. Maybe there are some great articles by him. Lesson from Year Twenty Nine. Lessons from Year Twenty Nine. Is it long? Let's just you know start reading. By Net Eliason in Life, published uh, or updated on March fifteenth. A 50th, yeah, 15th, 2022, so it is a fairly new article. Well, it seems I broke my streak of publishing these on my birthday. Oh well, better to still get it out late than not get it out at all. This is the fifth post in this series. If you're curious, you can read my previous posts on 25, 26, 27 and 28. Every year I say, okay, this is the year I'll take it easier. And it never seems to happen. Since my last birthday, Cosette and I had a baby, I learned programming, became a SOTA crypto influencer, helped launch a video game, started consulting crypto projects on their tokenomics and launched an SEO and DF, uh, DEFI or DEFI course. So once again, it was a crazy year and I'm amazed by how different life is now than it was last year. But surely this year will be different. Anyway, here are some assorted thoughts and lessons I took from this year. Most of these are inspired from themes in the medley over the last year, which has now transitioned from a link roundup to more of a weekly essay. I like the new format much better. I don't know what this is, so I'm really quickly checking it out. The Monday Medley Archives. This is the archives for the Monday Medley, a newsletter that goes out, you guessed it, every Monday. I re publish it here for sharing and referencing, but if you'd like to sign up, you can do so right here. <clears throat> how to beat the market, how to beat the market too, inside the investment, and so on and so forth. We're not going to go through that, but escaping local maxima. There is a computer science challenge where you have to figure out how to design a program to find the optimal solution. When there are many locally optimal, but not globally optimal solutions, it could, dis could get distracted by. The analogy Chris Dixon uses is climbing a hill. If you just tell the program to go up, it will climb to the top of the highest hill it's already on, but then it will be stuck there. 
If there is another higher peak, it won't seek it out. To get around this, you have to introduce some randomness into the system. It needs to make occasionally suboptimal short-term decisions in order to reach the best long-term solution. Each of us is climbing our own mountain, and it's, attempt it's tempting to always focus on going up because going down or asking if we picked the right mountain is scary. Because um, indeed, and I've actually seen that pretty often before, especially when it comes to projects that tend to be a bit longer, that I wonder then, not necessarily if I am making the right decisions, if what I'm doing at this point in time is great or if it isn't, but most often if I have chosen the right peak, if I've chosen the right mountain to climb, if I've set up the project in the right way beforehand. Um, and most often, uh, not really the case, unfortunately, but it's it's fine. It's okay. Most often it turned out pretty well. Sometimes you can indeed um, redo things and do things again and so on and so forth, but uh, of course it is work and of course it is time and of course it is many other things and um, well, definitely not to recommend. But like the computer program, if we climb to the top of the first mountain we pick, there is a near a near zero zone, a near zero chance, I'm sorry, um, we've picked the best mountain. Sometimes we have to look around and say, you know, that mountain might be better. Writing is the only work I do completely for itself. Everything else is at least partially motivated by money. Since it turns out money is kind of useful, and the more of it you can make faster, the less you have to make later. At least in theory. So while I was pretty set on writing for the meaningful work mountain, I knew there was still some searching to do for the best money mountain. The search worked. Last year was more lucrative than I could have expected to achieve from content marketing uh, or course making without selling out. And I had fun doing it. Depending on the goal, sometimes the best way to achieve is uh, to achieve it is to abandon the current path and find another. If my goal is to reach a comfortable enough degree of financial independence to focus on writing full time without having to write what will make money, quote unquote, crypto work is much better, is a much better mountain. And while it is scary to walk back down the mountain to try again, you at least should have some good hiking muscles. You never know how the skills you build on one mountain will help you on the next one. And that is for sure the case, and definitely not to miss and forget about. On the other hand, it is the exact same thing or the exact same feeling that I'm having about the podcast and many other things as well. Should I just start over again? Should I just, you know, do it in a different way again? It's, for me, it is definitely not about stopping doing whatever the fuck I'm doing. Um, it's important to me and I really like it. And um, it's, some sort of, it's also my identity, I would say. But should I do it differently? Should I do something different? Um, should I talk about something different? Should I kind of make things a bit differently? Um, I probably actually should. But up to this point, I was, I guess, a bit too scared to do so. And I did not have the energy and the, well, the courage to do so. Not about the energy. It's about courage. It's about saying, okay, I have seen that it is not good enough. And I should be doing something different. And I should really think about uh, the, the fundamentals of the new thing and then start that. Because maybe, and th this is the thing, I don't really know if this is going to work out. Maybe it doesn't. So who really knows? On one hand, on the other hand, then what this might lead to, okay, um, I might just continue doing whatever the fuck I'm doing because it is fun and it's, you know, I'm seeing some things, not many things, not, not great accomplishments or whatnot, but yeah. Zoom out. One mentality I've often railed against is the long-term career plan and courage in college. You need to study hard to get good grades, to get that first job so you can get promoted over the next 20 years and become a partner and then all your problems will be solved and you'll be eternally happy. Something like that. I am more of a fan of the driving in a fog analogy. You have a rough idea of where you are and where you want to go towards, but you can only see a little bit ahead of you. And you have to keep making progress based on that. 
and the less committed you are to a certain outcome, the freer you are to take the roads that make the most sense for you. For the last seven years since I graduated, I've rarely thought about work and progress on a longer than one to two year timescale. With growth machine, the focus was always on hitting the next revenue milestone or fixing the next problem. With this blog, I've never really had any goals, it just keeps growing. With starting down this crypto road last year, my only goal was to figure out some way to make money within a year so I didn't have to live entirely off savings and passive income. Now I'm trying to think a little bit more about the long term with work and money. The money is uh, the money one is important because in crypto land, everything moves so fast and there is always a chance you could find that one opportunity that launches you into the land of fabulous riches that you feel like you need to make a lot of money very quickly. Every outside, even outside of crypto though, there is always that sense that you could be making more money faster, that what that whatever pace you are at isn't good enough. Having a kid has made me zoom out a little and look at money on a 25 year timescale. If I'm 29 now and my last kid might turn 18 in 25 or so years, then I just need to make enough to give them the life I want them to have between now and then and to give Cosette and I the life we want to after. That is a long time. I don't need to hit any insane income numbers or major wealth events or crazy compound growth, to ra growth rates to have a great good to have a pretty i'm sorry pretty good outcome and it is not like i'd retire and chill on a beach even if i did so letting myself stop obsessing over trying to grow our wealth as fast as possible and thinking instead about what kids what kinds of habits will work out well over 25 years has been a great way to reframe things on the work side one thing i want to learn more towards is finding a work focus and style that i could conceivably stick with for the next 30 plus years it is obviously writing, that is the thing I happily work on, or even when there is no financial return, and when there is a financial return, is the most emotionally rewarding. I make less from my substack than most other projects, but the emotional satisfaction, reading is difficult, is much higher. Income is not the only metric, the source of income matters quite a bit for your psychological satisfaction, and I feel the best when I'm getting paid for my writing compared to anything else. So I'm trying to do a little bit better job of zooming out, not being overly fixated on the present and doing a better job being in the now instead of the future. And with that being said, I'm going to see you next time. So bye-bye.